Hey everybody! Today in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to take a simple logo and turn it into a really cool 3D printed pendant that we can then 3D print and then cast in pewter so that we have a really cool metal pendant. There's lots of ways to 3D print in metal. There's lots of services that'll do that for you, but most home 3D printers won't print in silver or metal, anything like that. So if you want to do it cheaply and affordably at home, uh, you can print it out in plastic and make a mold and then cast it out and uh, end up with a beautiful, professional looking metal pendant at the end. Let's get started. I'm starting with a PNG of the Adafruit logo on a transparent background. What we need to do is turn this into a vector image uh, and save it as an SVG so that we can get it imported into Fusion 360 and use it to extrude our pendant. The first step to doing this is to just select the whole entire layer. And then I'm going to go to my Paths menu and choose the Create Paths tool. This is going to make a sort of a rough work path uh, all the way around my image wherever the selection was. As you can see, if I turn off the layer, it's not very good. Um, the, the path isn't quite perfectly round or anything like that, but I can go in there with my direct selection tool and I can kind of mess with it and tweak on it until it looks the way I want. Once I'm pretty happy with it, then uh, what I'm going to do is take my path select tool, select the whole entire thing, and then go up here to edit and define custom shape. This is going to make a custom shape that I can uh, turn into a vector art uh, layer and then save as an SVG. I'll go ahead and click off the work path and I'm going to make a new layer to put my uh, vector artwork on and select the custom shape tool right here. Uh, my Adafruit logo has been popped in. It's all the way at the very, very end. It's been appended to the end of my list of custom shapes. So now that I've got it selected, I can just drag. I'm holding shift to make sure I keep the aspect ratio the same. Uh, I can just drag out and it'll create a beautiful vector art shape of the Adafruit logo. And at this point, I can just export it. And I'll choose SVG format right here and save it as an SVG so that I can import it into Fusion 360 when I'm ready to do that. Now we'll go over to Fusion 360 and go ahead and import our SVG and turn it into a beautiful pendant. I'll start a new design here and the first thing I want to do is to establish the size of the pendant. I think I want my pendant to be about 50 millimeters across, so I'm just going to choose this floor plane here and make a center diameter circle that is 50 millimeters. Now I'm ready to import that image I just made. So I'm going to go to Insert SVG and find the file. And it came in pretty small, so I'm going to have to resize it until it is the size and placement that I want. I'm just going to kind of play with these tools until it looks good. I think I want it to be a little bit off-center, and I want it to go off the edge of the pendant just a little bit. But obviously this is <laughs> discretion and make it beautiful for you. All right, I'm pretty happy with that, so I'm going to click OK. And then I'll go ahead and hit Stop Sketch. Now it's time to start extruding. I'm hitting E for extrude, and the first thing I'm going to do is select the entire big pendant circle, including all the little seeds of the flower, because I want to make the, the dome part first. So I'm going to extrude that. We'll go up about five millimeters. Click OK. And we've got a nice pendant slug to get started with. Uh, what I'll do next is I'm going to go ahead and extrude the flower part as well, but just the part that intersects with where the pendant body is going to be. So I'm just going to select this one face and then hit E for extrude again. And I'm going to go a little bit higher than five just so that we have a little bit of room to work with. I think I'm going to make it ten. 
make sure you selected new body in that last window so that you have we have two separate bodies that we can work with uh, instead of joining or combining them just yet. Uh, we'll do that a little bit later, but we want to tweak them a little bit first. So I've got my pendant body. Let's go ahead and name these. I've got my pendant body turned off and I'm going to move this flower up just a couple of millimeters so that we have a nice solid back to the pendant once we finish with the embossing. I'm hitting M for move and I'm going to make sure I have bodies selected here. And then we're just going to move it up by about two millimeters. Now if you turn the pendant back on, you can see it intersects, but it doesn't go all the way through the bottom, which is kind of what we want. Now, we'll go ahead and combine them. My target body, I'm going to select the pendant, and my tool body, I'm going to select the flower, and I'm going to choose cut. And that should make a nice little flower-shaped hole in my tool body. Looks pretty good. Now I want to fill at the edge of the pendant. I'm going to select all three of these edges and hit the fillet tool. We're going to see how far we can go. Uh, with, the, with the way I have it cut here, it may be that uh, we can't go real far without it throwing an error. It looks like that's true, so let's try three millimeters. And that's going to work. Let's try three and a half. Oh, that's too far. So it looks like three is about how far we can go before it starts throwing errors, but that looks pretty good to me. So we'll click OK here, and we have a nice rounded edge for the top of our pendant. Next, I want to make the seeds actually a little bit shorter. So what I'm going to do is click this top face on each of these, and I'm going to hit E for extrude, and we're going to extrude them just down by about one, maybe one and a half millimeters. I just think that looks a little bit better. I will make sure that cut is selected here. And now the seeds are a little bit more recessed. I think that looks pretty cool. The last thing we need to do is make a hole at the top of the pendant for the necklace cord to go through. A good size hole for a necklace cord or a jump ring is going to be about four millimeters. So in order to create that, I'm just going to go over here to create cylinder. And I want it centered right on that green line. The Adafruit logo is a little off center in alignment. Um, we want to keep it that way, but make sure that the pendant hangs neatly from its, from its top here. I'm going to turn my origin plane on and actually spin around to the back so that I can select that bottom plane in order to put the cylinder right on the bottom instead of having it be on the top of the pendant. Now that I've selected that, I'm going to select a center point that is right on this green line and a couple millimeters down. And then I'm going to make a four millimeter circle. Good. Uh, for height, we'll just go ahead and do 10 millimeters for now so that it's nice and tall. And choose cut, and it will cut a nice little round hole right through the top of our pendant. And that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. We'll go ahead and send it to the 3D printer and see how it turns out, uh, and then make a mold of it and cast it in pewter. I'm going to print in ABS at a really high resolution. My layer height's going to be really small. I set it to 0.1 millimeters, so I'll get a really smooth, rounded pendant right out of the printer. Once it's printed, I'm going to make it even smoother uh, using 150 grit sandpaper to just sand off any obvious edges or ridges or artifacts from the printer. Next, we'll make the mold. I'm using Easy Mold Silicone Putty. This stuff works great for resin or low temperature metals like pewter, though you wouldn't want to use it for silver or gold casting. Mix a one inch ball of each part thoroughly together. Once it's mixed, we have just three minutes of working time until it sets up, so move pretty quickly. Be sure to get some putty in all the little cracks and crevices so we don't have any air bubbles. An air bubble will transfer to the pewter, so make sure it's in there nice and tight.
Then use the rest of the putty to make a smooth, flat back dome over the rest of the pendant. Be sure the putty squishes all the way through the hole so that that remains open when we do our cast. Wait 25 minutes for the putty to fully cure. Then, carefully remove the original and check to make sure your mold looks good with no air bubbles. If everything looks good, cut a pour spout with a utility knife along one edge so that we can pour the pewter in. Take some talcum powder and dust the mold evenly. This will keep any bubbles or pits from forming when you pour the pewter in. Take the mold and clamp it between a couple pieces of wood or another flat surface with a C-clamp. You don't want to clamp it too tightly, just enough to hold it in place so that the pewter won't leak out along the sides. Settle it in a tray of loose sand that'll catch any overflow pewter. And then melt your pewter to a nice molten temperature and pour it in. Once it cools a bit, take the clamp off and take a look. If it didn't pour perfectly, then you can easily just melt it back down again and give it another shot. Clamping too tightly is not your friend here. It makes it a little more difficult to get the pewter in. But once you find a pour that you're totally happy with, then demold it and uh, start to clean up the pewter pendant. Trim off any excess metal from the pour spout. And then it's time to start sanding again. I started with 150 grit sandpaper and then moved up through the, the fine, finer and finer paper until I got all the way to 1000 grit. You can also use a rotary tool here to kind of buff off any rough edges. Use pliers to put a jump ring through the hole and attach some necklace hardware and then slip your cord through and you have a beautiful professional looking pewter pendant. If you like this video, remember to subscribe for more fun Adafruit projects. Thanks so much for watching.